up, fellas? We're at the RV Super Show here, and this won People's Choice as the most badass RV hauler at the event. I mean, take a look at it. You know, it is all hooked up to haul a Jeep on the back here. And if you've ever been to Jeep Beach, you'll see the mayor of Margaritaville. How you doing? Hey, everybody. Pleased to meet you. Same here. I'm Rob Cornelius, and this is my 2012 Volvo 780. It is really impressive. Thank so you. I'm sure you didn't start out with this. You worked your way up to it. But how, how, how does this compare to hauling with your, your previous rig? You probably had an F450 or something. No, I had a Ram, a Ram Dually. It did a great job, you know, um, pulling. But it was that thing about stopping, right? So some people come up to me and go, uh, is this overkill? And I say, not really. And they ask me, why do I go to something this big? And my number one answer is safety, right? Is stopping, stopping power. Most of all the Rams, Fords, Chevys, they can pull these fifth wheels. It's the stopping power that you're, you know, looking at. So with the engine brake, it's got a three-stage engine brake that, you know, going down hills, you got to give it gas because the engine brakes are so awesome on these things. You don't so. really need to use the regular brakes. No, I hardly use my foot brake. So, and inside here, let's see, um, you know, going down the road, if, it's like a mini motorhome inside, you know, if I get hungry going down the road, my wife Nina can make sandwiches or lunch for us because it's got a refrigerator. It's got a microwave, a dinette, a double bunk up in the, uh, condo cab, TV, toilet. I mean, so we can just roll all day long and it's got 280 gallons of fuel. So it's not like we have to stop every two hours. And with the air, air chairs inside and the, the view that you get, you, you can just see forever. So like driving my Ram truck every couple hours, you know, you get tired of worrying about someone's gonna stop in front of you and how you're gonna, you know, maneuver the truck and trailer. With this thing, it's effortlessly, and you don't feel the road, you don't hear the engine, it's quiet. So, and you don't even, you don't even hear the, uh, or I mean, you don't even feel the fifth wheel behind you. And then on our solitude, I have the uh, More Ride independent suspension. I was all excited about getting that because I'm gonna feel the difference of it's gonna ride better. Really didn't notice the difference behind this truck but I'm sure behind a regular conventional sure. pickup truck, you'll feel it. Do you have to look in your rear view to make sure it's still there it's when you go still, down the road? Right, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm always checking my mirrors, but I'll tell you. Really, you it, with a rig like this, it's not the tail wagging the dog like a pickup truck. This, no. it's the, the truck's in command and it weighs almost as much, if not more than the RV, so. That, exactly, that's that's where I was gonna go with that is, you know, your pickup truck weighs what? Six, 8,000 pounds, I guess. This weighs right in at 21,000 pounds, which is a little bit more than the fifth wheel, so. The engine alone on this truck weighs 3,000 pounds. This is a D16, right? Yes. So how many, it's 16 a, liters, right? Yeah. Now let's put that into perspective. Your Ram was a 5.9 or 6.7? 6.7. So it's almost three times the size of the engine. It literally weighs three times as much. Right. And it's under stress. Yeah, and here's the other thing. People are, oh my gosh, it's, it's gotta be expensive to operate this thing, really? It, so far it is not because like in the Ram, you got three gallons of oil in the truck, right? Yep. And me, every 5,000 miles, I change the oil. So do the math of oil changes. This is 13 gallons of oil. And at 50,000 miles, I'm supposed to send my oil in for an oil sample. And they might come back and say, just your oil filters need to be changed and not the oil because yep. this truck is not running hard and pulling a lot of weight like it, you know, a commercial truck. And then again, the tires, I'll have to replace these tires due to age, not because they're worn out, right? Yeah, these are designed to go quarter million plus miles, aren't they? Right. And they could be, these are recapable tires, not that you do that, but. No, and those are Michelins, so they ride last. nice, they're quiet. But the brakes too, you'll never wear your brakes out. That, really. Right. Whereas yeah. on a Ram, you'd go through brakes every, what, 15,000 miles probably. Right. And tires too, 40 to 60,000, you know, if you're towing all the time. So once every six years or so, I'll probably change the tires. So I won't let them get old, but just saying, you know, the times you change the tires and oil and, and brakes and maintenance on the pickup truck, 
this thing is working what 10 percent of what it's really supposed to pull because this one's designed to pull up in the neighborhood of a hundred thousand pounds and it's towing twenty thousand pounds so um i can't say enough about it you know it's it, it's i've been in it a year and a half and Interior it's just beautiful a, oh yeah i really it, like the wood green and the fit finish and on the interior like you mentioned there's enough space in the back of here that this compares in square footage to most van campers you've right you've got a dinette in the back you've and got a full uh, bunk up in the top this skeleton is, steve is back there too yeah i saw that this is the same exact cab as our, as ours and we love it we um like you mentioned you can leave the rig and you could go to jeep beach without a camper if right. you wanted to go drive this right out into the beach you could sure and uh the camp inside of this there's plenty so, of room so what we're going to do too with the jeep because i know I, I i have boxed ourselves out in going to some rv parks right because simply we would we won't fit but that allows us to find other campgrounds and other places to go right and across the country there's you know the trend is changing the rvs are bigger there's being more rv <clears throat> excuse me RV resorts being built. So they are housing our size rigs, right? So out west, if we can't fit in some state parks and stuff like that, we can offload the Jeep. And I'm turning this Jeep into an overlander. So we can overland with the uh, kitchen and stove that's in there. And then I'm putting a rooftop tent. Those are awesome. I love those. Right? So, so uh, you really have three campers. You, you I have know. Small, medium, and large. Or large. <laughs> yeah. So we can. Or small, medium, and large. Yeah. Yeah. We can do, you know, it's like a Swiss Army knife of campers. You can go exactly. pretty much, Just and you can pick out whichever one you want. And, without stopping for fuel, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, 280 gallons, and then they say, "Oh, that thing must use fuel." Gets the same fuel mileage as my Ram did, but you're, I only, not, you're not stressing the motor. You're only at half throttle versus yeah. matted on the Ram going up the hills, right? Right, and then uh, 280 gallons, so I can go cross country with it. So, uh, twin stacks are those uh, custom or are those? No, those are the Volvo stacks, but this is one thing that we didn't get finished yet in the build. Um, there's a couple more cool things that are happening. I'm having a drum box. That's the storage we have box. One in ours. I keep my, my riding boots and uh, helmets in there and stuff. And yeah. I hang, I hang jackets in it. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. It'll be watertight, and I take the weight out of the fifth wheel and put in there like my tools and stuff. Sure. But like a lot of HDTs, they have the drum box and then you gotta turn the handle and open the doors. Yep. Well, you gotta move the Jeep or the smart car out the way, yep. right? Yeah. So what we did, my builder, uh, Jesse and Neil, um, at Hall Fabrications in Arbondale, Florida, we measured a Ranger pickup truck bed, right? Okay. And you know the, the roll-up uh, covers? Yep. The metal one, you know, aluminum? So we're putting a powered roll-up that's bed awesome. cover mounting the box up top so i can hit a button and it'll be like a garage so you door can leave the jeep there and yeah open your door yeah so the bed you mentioned hall they're, they're the they're the company that built this bed so if somebody wants to have one of these built i think you have one of their business cards over here right yeah hall fabrications look these guys up um there's only a couple comp there's two other companies heron haulers and so there's jack mayer uh his company makes these too um, you can check it if you if you're interested in getting one of these the best thing to do is go on to one of the forums like the HDT RV forums I'll post this video up on one of them and uh, um, If you guys on the forum want to get one of these beds built I haven't heard of Hall before are they specialists in this type of build? So this is their first one. Well hell they hit it out of the park. <laughs> I know and it's so overbuilt underneath um, I, I came to him with an idea because um, there's HDTs out there which are beautiful. I wanted something different where, you know, you leave the back of the cab and then it turns into a straight steel bed. I wanted something more to flow. So what I did is went to Volvo and we bought four more of these panels, cut them down to fit. Well, oh, that's why it looks factory. That's an actual Volvo part. Yeah, it's in that, yep. Same with the stainless. And then Neil at Hall Fabrications he handmade this piece here and then this this uh fender skirt here if you will that's a stainless polished stainless oh yeah this is It'll never rust. this is like that's on pierce fire trucks this is where wow. this actually no came kidding. from huh. yep and then check this out this, this is one of my little ideas so on the back of my jeep i have aftermarket uh led 
and those are sequential. When you turn your turn signal on, they're sequential. Nice. But if you will, come right here and check out. We have matching. I thought they look familiar. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what they came off of. There it is. Yep. And then That's here. Cool. Uh, I think Jack, Jack Mayer and, and those guys, they use the ones off the Ford F-350. Ford, yes. I actually like this better. It looks good, really good. And then uh, uh, Jesse made this. This all out oh, of aluminum. aluminum. Yep, so yeah, you just pull nice. this and then the Jeep. Is that solid aluminum? No, it's box, oh, but boxes. it's really thick. It looks super heavy, dude. But it's light and it, it slides in its own compartment. The, the hitch is something definitely worth mentioning, too, because these are a fantastic. Oh, the trail saver. Airbags, shock absorbers. That's the same one we have on ours, but I don't know if I don't know if that mine has the shocks. I think mine's an older version of this. Right. But um But boy, I tell you fantastic. what, the fifth wheel rides so good on there. We have a camera right here on ours, and you can watch that thing doing its job. It does yeah. move up and down quite a bit. So what we're doing, because like I said, we got this out of this shop at 1.30 Saturday morning. This is your maiden voyage with it, right? Yeah. So I'll have the first video on online. Yes, yes, you will. <laughs> yes. Awesome. And so we, it looks complete, but there's so many little tricky things that, we, you know, the drum box, a couple things back here. I'm adding a, a black water tank under here would be 70 gallons. Fantastic. That's what this is. Oh, wow. And then on the other side, I'll have a fresh water tank. That way, when we go boondocking, if the shitter gets full, yep. we can pump it from the RV to the truck. And when I run out of water in the RV, I pump the water from the truck to the RV. Sure. And then I use the truck back and forth <coughs> to uh, <coughs> empty and fill again. So that's what's that's under a here. Idea. And then and it, it, it'll probably ride better with extra weight back there, right? Speaking oh, yeah. of riding better, I saw this truck online when it was a twin screw. Yes. You convert it to the single screw. I'll bet it rides better now, doesn't it? It rides, okay, so to compare it when it was single screw when you saw it, it rode like a dually pickup truck. Yep. This now rides like an F-150, a wow. half ton. Yep. It is so smooth, um, it's amazing. And then you put the Jeep on it and it just floats. And then when I put the fifth wheel on there, it's it was fun. like, so I had to- Cadillac. Yeah, like you said, I had to check the mirrors to make sure the fifth wheel's still there. We, we came out of an F-350 and then an F-450 before we got our, our Volvo, and Christy fell. First venture we went on, she's like, this is way better. You don't get that huck -a buck when you go over uh, bumps with, with the pickup truck. It bounces. And, yep, with the two and axles. You've got the bed in the back and, and the microwave. and the We put a porta potty in ours, and, and mm -hmm. of course, you got the refrigerator, so it's like a little camper. And the view, everything you mentioned, uh, she loves it. She absolutely, and I, I love driving it too because it's stress free. I oh, find yeah. I can drive a lot farther in, in the semi than I can in the pickup without getting tired. Sometimes my feet would swell up in the pickup truck, right. my lower legs after you know driving 20 hours from, from Connecticut to, to Florida. In the semi, you've got the air ride seat. You can go up and down. You can make it so your feet aren't even touching the ground if you want, or you can have it low rider sitting right on the floor. Exactly. And you can adjust your lumbar, like six different adjustments on the seat. Yeah, in, in our seats, um, they're heated and air conditioned. And then also you hit another button and in, in your butt area, it airs up and deflates. And then there's, I think, four or five different bags in the back of the seat. So up your, your back actually feels better when you get out than when you got in. Is oh, that yeah. a factory option or is that something? Yeah, it's all factory Volvo wow. stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yep. It's next level stuff. And the Volvo, uh, the reason most of the HDTs are Volvos, there's a lot of different reasons, but turning radius. A lot of people say, wow, it's such a long rig. What about the turning radius? I happen to own a Kenworth also, a T800 that we call a 53 foot stacker with. Right. And that thing, you know, it doesn't have the turning radius. The, the turning radius in these Volvos is fantastic. It's probably as good as my F450. They turn really good. That's what I compare to like my Ram truck. You know, it, you, you had to use a half a football field, right? And the F450s have a beautiful turning radius. So that's what I compare like this to an F450, because you, I think it's 50 something, 52 or three degree turning radius on this Volvo. So that's, you know, people say, oh, it's hard to move around. No, you just learn your pivot points. And now here's another thing with these HDTs. The pivot point on this is amazing because your fifth wheel hitch connection is behind the axle. So this combination actually turns like a travel trailer. Yep. So you're, when you start to turn, your reaction time is so much quicker and you don't need so much room to get that fifth wheel to start turning because it pivots way back here after the axle. So guys, uh, if you're wondering uh, 
How did you get the, uh, people want to know, how did you get the nickname the mayor? Oh, at Camp Margaritaville, we have a resort in Auburndale, Florida. It's right on your shirt there, right? RV, come on. And, and guys, if you yeah. have a big rig, you, yeah, that we're, is the place you want to go. They designed it for big rigs, right? Or, yeah, in, in so. mind, yeah, because we know the RVs are much bigger. This, this, All the toy haulers, everything I get Yeah, bigger. and then, the you know, like ours, we have a bunch of HDTs, big Class A's, you know, the pushers and stuff like that. So we have 325 sites that our shortest site is 85 and they go up to 105. It's, uh, most of them are all pull through sites. We have back ends and they're all level. There's no natural grass at the site. It's all cement or shell with pavers and astroturf grass at your site. So we don't have to water and mow grass, blow grass all over your custom paint and get water spots on it. So we thought of that. Easy turning through the park. You can navigate through the uh, resort just fine. And we've got two pools, three restaurants, two tiki bars, big community fire pits. And then we just finished our 18,000 square foot uh, recreation building where we can have concerts, big movies. Um, the kids can play inside on the turf when it's raining or hot or stuff like that. So that's done. And we got a couple more amenities coming. but. So it, it happened where I had a bunch of my firefighter friends and police officer buddies and stuff like that. When we were new, all these questions were coming at me and the fire chief, you know, after <sighs> me answering up a hundred questions, he's like, you're like the damn mayor of this place. <laughs> so, at, you know, at a, at a firehouse, big firehouse, they normally have the mayor and the yeah. guy knows everything about the station. <clears throat> so I got deemed the mayor and it was a spoof, but now it's like, it's awesome. The kids know where the mayor lives, and <coughs> if they get lost, they can come by City Hall. They call it City Hall. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome park, big rig friendly. And if you ever want to come to the resort and book online or call, you can use my discount code, the mayor. The mayor. Cool. And hey, that doesn't expire either. I just so. met, uh, we were talking to some. Uh, friends inside the show who had come down with their kids and they went to Disney World and they went to Margaritaville and the kids, this is probably the best recommendation you'd ever get, the kid says they'd rather go to Margarita, Mar Margaritaville than they had more fun at your campground than they had at Disney World, which is, I can't think of a better recommendation from yep. the mouths of the babes, you know, from the kids. Right, you know? we get a lot, a lot of compliments. A lot of families, like you know, wanna, they, they do this to create great memories for your kids and the, the environment you set up at Margaritaville is, is top notch and, and adults have a lot of fun too because all the amenities are yeah, there. Yeah, the amenities and then we have an activities team for adults and kids. So the, the kids are always busy with our activities and then we have adult activities as well. And to me, it's like back in the uh, <coughs> 80s with these kids, right? Because the parents come in there, they're nervous about having Wi-Fi. I gotta have Wi-Fi. My kids have got to see their YouTube family. And does Wi-Fi work? Yes, but let me tell you, I can almost guarantee you, your kids won't even touch their iPads when they're here. And it's true, That's it's fantastic. like back in the 80s when kids went outside and rode their bikes and played with other kids and had a great time. That's what it's like at Margaritaville. I've heard nothing but great stuff about it. And I've seen your website. The website's fantastic. The aerial photos of the place are off the hook. Thank you. And uh, you, where, where's, the, where's the location of Margaritaville? You're in uh, central Florida? Yes, in the city of Auburndale. And you say, where's Auburndale? Well, it is centrally located between Tampa and Orlando, right off of I-4. That's perfect. That's oh, a, yeah. You couldn't pick the better spot. Oh, yeah, Plus, either way. Beach, if someone's uh, there for bike week here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Halfway. Yeah, during bike week, we get a bunch of guys in toy haulers and stuff like that. Because we're only... Depending upon traffic and back roads, about an hour and a half away. Perfect. To Daytona, nice, nice ride to, Cocoa to, Beach, Clearwater. Away from all the craziness of Bike Week, but close enough to go Co and have some fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yep. Guys, I thought we'd bring over the women, get the women's perspective. This is Rob's wife, Nina. Yes. How are you doing? Good. How are you? And, of course, everybody knows Christy. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so, Christy, your thoughts first uh, on, on riding versus the pickup truck, the HTT. Okay. So... The pickup truck, we have the King Ranch. I do love our King Ranch, but to ride in that compared to riding in the Volvo is night and day. It's like riding in a big Cadillac and you, the view is 10 times better. I like the fact that I feel much safer that this is pulling the DRV and not 
the truck. The truck can do it, but again, it comes down to stopping. But I love the fact that we've got a dinette, refrigerator. I can feed Ken. Mm, <laughs> thank you very much. Big plus for Ken, yes. Yeah. I mean, we have all the comfort in there. And if we want, and we're going to the track or something, we just unhook the Volvo and bring it. Because we got the lift on the back for the CR500. Yeah, we went to the hill climbs with just, yeah. just by rig. And we right. Just went to the races and did the hill climb. It was. Stop and then went back to the campground. Yep. And we still have, you know, like a mini camper right in here. Yep. So. It, it is very much a mini camper. In fact, people live full time in these uh, on the road, the truck drivers. Yeah. Literally, uh, you know, 50 weeks a year. Oh, yeah. They're, they're gone Monday through Friday and they're sometimes full time. Putting hundreds of thousands of miles on these babies, right? They're designed for that and they won't break down. The new pickups you hear horror stories all the time with yeah. DEF and everything, but these are designed for their million mile rigs. So, Nina, you guys had a Ram 3500 before this, yes. diesel dually. What are your thoughts? What were your first impressions riding in the big rig? Um, I like it because we were having to double tow with the Ram and it didn't seem to have control of the whole rig at all times. So I, I was that made me nervous. Um, and the dogs used to have to be in crates in the back seat. So now back in here, I have a baby gate where they can just kind of walk around and jump up on the couch and Relax. They're more comfortable, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, so. they're sleeping upside down like. <laughs> That's how my cat was. Bouncing. <laughs> and and the other cool thing, not to interrupt, but like the dogs are sleeping in upside down. This whole cab is on air, just as well as the chassis is on air and just like the seats in there are on air. So the ride is just amazing. Oh, and your hitch is on air too. So that you too. Away air ride, so you don't feel the trailer, you don't feel the wheels. You basically float over, you hit potholes and stuff like that. You don't need, we're, we're in your pickup truck. You're oh, like you're racing for the, for the well, abuse. You yeah. felt it. Yeah, oh, the, the, yeah. The, the, this, it's a, it is literally riding on air. You probably have between the seats and the cab and, and the uh, rear suspension, probably a foot and a half of air ride, you know? Right. And then the fifth wheel, we've got the more ride pin box. And then I've got the more ride independent suspension. And let me tell you, I, I said earlier, you couldn't feel it in the truck. So I was like, mm. and then I put stuff, soft items, and we have a rear kitchen, and as you know, the rear kitchens have a tendency to bounce, break yeah. eggs in the refrigerator and stuff. So I put little soft items all over the countertops and stuff like that, and then took off again, stopped down the road in, your, in the beautiful roads of Indiana. <laughs> um, we got out, I opened the slide, walked to the kitchen, and everything I laid out on the countertops after we put the independent suspension in, nothing moved. It, it, the independent suspension of, that more ride makes for these things are amazing so everything that, in your camper stayed nice too yeah. oh yeah well and the thing just because you can't feel it in this now i know the box you know the fifth wheel it's being taken care of as well with the air ride hitch the independent suspension that thing you look in the mirrors because with these beautiful mirrors on these big trucks you can see the tires of the trailer and you can see the tires going to work with that independent suspension that they're working. Like the tires on the right might hit a pothole. That doesn't mean the left side knows that the right side hit a pothole, if you will. Yeah. And the tires are you know, doing this and you look at the box and it's not moving. So just a little tidbit on independent suspension, but t tell them about our trip from Indiana when we did the independent suspension down to yeah we we went from Indiana all the way to Georgia so usually I don't like to travel that far yeah. I'm a few hours and I'm done so in probably the pick up, in the pick up. oh six yeah six hours max and I think how long did we travel twelve yeah and you still felt good it was comfortable yeah yeah we didn't have to stop for fuel or nothing it was just like from I think we left um, Elkhart area yeah. mm -hmm. and we stopped down at exit eighty two at Carroll Sausage. That's a good spot. <laughs> so the pickup truck has roughly 50 gallons of fuel. You have how, how many gallons at 200? 280. So you have six times the fuel capacity, about the same fuel mileage. So six to one fuel stops. And it's not easy pulling in to fill up with a massive toy hauler, especially if you've got mm -hmm. the Jeep in tow too. Right. So with all that stress of going in and out of the truck stops, you just eliminated, you know, f five out of six stops. Yeah. And you get to go to trucks stations with this. That's where you right. Pull right in and they're designed for They're this. designed. Oh yeah, they're wide and then they got the big nozzle. It takes, you know, I don't ever run it below half tank. I don't like, you know, to get it low. Um, so it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes at the most. That's pulling in, putting my gloves on, getting a hose and because there's a fill on each side. 
-hmm. and at the truck stop you don't have to take the hose to each side because you got a satellite pump so you can put both hoses in and it's filled and they're a much higher velocity maybe let's say the sure. regular gas station is two gallons per minute that's 10 gallons per oh it's so yeah you got a big nozzle times two nozzles because you know these truck drivers they're on a time frame right mm -hmm. they got to get going so it, it dumps the fuel in and we're out of there some people might think the height of the truck is a disadvantage, but the reality is it's the same height as the camper now. Correct, 13, 13.5-ish. 13, yeah. So anything the camper can go through, this can this. go through. And when you see a diesel dually in front of one of these big toy haulers, <laughs> it looks like the tail wagging the dog, you know? It just well, doesn't look right, you know? And, and the other thing, because ours is a full body paint job, so with the Volvo sitting in front of the Solitude, no more paint chips on our front cap. Mm. That's a big question. No, you know, and in Florida, we got those nasty love bugs. Yeah. So the acid the of the... Stays clean. Oh, yeah. And then you can, you can go to the, you know, Blue Beacon, pull in. You know, they wash the whole thing in about 15 minutes. Yeah. And it's a good deal, right? Well, we really appreciate you sharing this rig with us. It's definitely next level. Yeah, we got the beautiful. biggest engine Volvo makes. <laughs> All set up with the Jeep on back. It is absolutely amazing. Rob, there was something else you were telling me about in the truck. Can you uh, show us that again? Yeah, this is this is Thank one of the, the cool little things that, that Jesse and Neil created. But you see this door right here? People are like, oh, that's kind of, you know, cool looking. It's all body smooth and stuff. Wow, now that's badass. <laughs> it's, it, it, that sounded so cool. Too. Yeah. It's like Batman's, uh, Batman's door here. Wow, so that's see on the Batmobile. That is freaking awesome. And that's a, that's a big, big storage bay too. That's like similar, to like what you get underneath the uh, underneath the coach. Right. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm not done yet. Obviously, I got to put the carpet in and stuff like it. that. But that that's so cool. 100 <laughs> waterproof. I can't, I can't say that I've seen one of those. But it's both ways here. Right. That is straight up badass. Yeah. So Hall must be uh, an engineer or something to figure that kind of stuff out. You know. Yeah, he's been in the business like for 30 years. And to drive up to his, you know, facility, you're like, they don't do this stuff here. But he's done a lot of uh, semis, stretching, and a lot of show trucks. Where's he based out of? Arbondale, Florida. Oh, Hall Florida. Fabrications. And he's old school, so you can't go to, you can't say go to www.hall because he's got no. Forget about it. He's got a flip phone and he put it the phone. <laughs> no, he does have a smartphone. Oh, he does? Yes. <laughs> yes. He does have a phone number. And it's Jesse Hall with Hall Fabrications at area code 863-242-0171. And it's Jesse Hall and then his partner, Neil. And Neil's a lot of the design behind the scenes and stuff like that. So between the two of those guys, they're, they're just amazing. And this, like I said, this is their first one they built. And I got to tell you one other thing I forgot. The truck and trailer haven't seen each other for two months. And that's all it took was two months. And I was all worried. Pretty good turnaround time for this, this extensive. Uh, yeah, for not even knowing what we're doing. We just drew stuff out on paper. He doesn't have any CAD drawings or nothing. Notes, paper, the text, a lot of text message. And that's it. And here it is. But back in the day when it was a twin screw, when you saw it, I had the hitch on top of the frame. Yep. And the truck and trailer rode perfectly level. Now the hitch is down in the frame so i'm thinking oh my gosh now the trailer's going to ride nose heavy what do i do so he comes over to the resort takes the pin box off does you know the measuring how he does measure measure okay yep he drags the pin box to his um, hummer drops in it pew, comes back the next day and i watched him for a bit and took you know metal and welded it and gusted it and so now we dropped this pin box down eight inches and the like i said the truck and trailer were not together he did this all by eye and measurement so look at this beautiful weld and it's all gusseted that looks factory if you didn't tell me that was done i wouldn't even notice yeah honest with you. he dropped this eight inches because of you know the frame is i'm sorry the hitch is in the frame so now this thing it was a half inch off top or front to back but if you cut it in the middle, that's only a quarter inch off front to back. And he didn't even have the truck or the trailer together to do this. Is there a button inside that, that you can adjust how much air goes onto the hitch? Yes, on the dashboard, um, you can hit a button and it airs these bags up. And also, if it's if it's too bouncy, psh, you can deflate it. How many pounds did you run in there? 
I'm running 60 in mine. Yeah. I actually drew a... Uh, there is a line on this yeah, side. Yeah, so, so I can, if it's a little low, yeah. I'll notice it. And, yep. Yeah. I think it's uh, 50 I run. So what we're doing too is it's not finished yet. Like I said, we got it out late. Um, I'm having a camera. It'll be here somewhere. It'll flip up and I'll have a, a, a side view with the put, camera. put ours right there. And oh, I'm having one there. I don't know if it's, oh, you're gonna have two? Oh, wow. Because awesome. I want a side view, you know, to see if, it, I'll probably have her back the truck up and then I hit the buttons to bring the fifth wheel up and down. And um, so I'll have a camera up front and on the side so I can see, because the, the system I have, you can have uh, four cameras on the screen. Nice. Where's the uh, other camera going on the back of the, the in truck? Front of the, uh, in front of the Jeep so I can see the Jeep movement. And then I have one on the back of the fifth wheel. And then I have- Which helps back and up. Yep. Time. And then I have one on each side so I can see down the side of the fifth wheel. And like you mentioned, the mirrors, one thing to note, she has not, not just the side mirrors, you have the mirrors on the front fenders. Oh yeah, that, that those are- real good view of Yeah, because if somebody, you know how people sit here and, and, and I get it, they want to look at the Jeep up here or whatever, and, they're, and they ride right here. Pictures of you as you're driving by. <laughs> yeah, and you need to change the lane and you got your turn signal like on. You a minivan underneath your rear tire. <laughs> yeah, but that side mirror up there on the fender, like you said, that helps to see that car right here. And then another cool thing with Volvo is when you turn your turn signal on, you have this That's turn morning, signal like, here that yeah, tells the driver. If you, if you can see that from here, you're in the suicide zone. Yes. Time to move. <laughs> and I and I give this guy that's driving here in this lane that won't move three flashes. Three flashes, I'm coming over. <laughs> so either shit or get off the pot. Well, congratulations on, on building what I believe is the ultimate RV and Jeep hauler. And of course, if you wanted to put Harleys up there instead or a, a, a side by side, you have the flexibility. With it. You can haul pretty much anything on there. Oh yeah. How many foot is the flatbed? Um. Uh, I forget. That's one, um, 16 or 18 feet. I forget. So there's a lot of flexibility for what you can haul on there. Yeah, I'm going to put my, he's altering the, uh, the ramps that come out the back to house my 39 Chevy. Badass. Yeah, so that'll go, it'll miss the hitch. Nice. So, so if we go to a car show, I take the 39. We go wheeling, we take the Jeep. So the, the, the numbers I do know, that it's 300 inches wheelbase, yep. and then the whole unit is 37 feet long. It's awesome. Well, congratulations, Nina and Rob. You've, you've got the most awesome rig on the road here. Uh, I wish you guys great success with it, and enjoy your travels. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And as always, God bless you, God bless the United States of America.